Right everyone, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you my review of Chelsea's 2-0 win in the second leg at home against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. We are sailing through to the quarter-finals. First time we've got to the quarter-finals, I believe since about 2014. It's been a long time coming and Thomas Tuchel's men really proving their worth over what has been just an incredible run ever since he's come in. Still unbeaten in 13 games. I believe that is a record for a Chelsea manager starting his job in terms of consistent unbeaten streak, which you love to see. I actually did, um, by the way, guys, record my preview for this game yesterday, but was unable to get it up. I know there's been a little bit of a break, so I will later on in this video address sort of the games that I didn't cover, the Everton game and the Leeds game. But we will obviously be focusing foremost on the Atletico Madrid win, where it was just a great performance all around. I'll be going through the key moments for you guys, as well as giving you guys my player ratings and my player of the season point scoring system as well. So if you enjoy, please be sure to leave a like if you are happy that these Chelsea videos are back on this channel. West Ham career mode and FPL videos will begin continuing again, so don't you guys worry about that. Um, and as always, guys, if you want to check those out, do subscribe to the channel for more Chelsea FC content. I really cannot wait for the hairdressers to open, by the way, because this hair is getting pretty out of control. But enough about me. The team was a 3-4-3, as it is always. And maybe a few interesting choices. The fan base a little bit split at the start of the game. We were wondering why there was some omissions. Obviously, Eduardo Mendy was in goal. That would have probably have caused a lot of concerns if he wasn't. But we did see Aspilicueta. We did see Rudiger. We actually saw Kurt Zuma in the middle of the back three. Now, Christensen wasn't included in the squad at all. So I guess we can only assume that he had picked up some sort of injury. Thiago Silva was already injured, we all knew that. Um, he was actually in the stands with Mason Mount and Jorginho, which I'll get to a little bit later. But I think some of us were a bit worried, you know, Zuma, I think he was good against Leeds. Um, not against Leeds, against Everton. Um, but I think he's definitely more suited to being on one of the sides of the back three. Um, he wasn't too great in the centre against Southampton. So I think some of us had a few concerns, but it actually turned out to not be too bad at all. But moving slightly up, we had Alonso and Reese James at the wing backs, which I did predict. We also had Kante and Kovacic in the middle. Obviously, Jorginho was ineligible to play this match. The front three, I think, is what did take people by surprise. I thought we were going to see Callum Hudson Odoi and Olivier Giroud in this team, accompanied by Timo Werner, but we actually saw Werner, Ziyech and Havertz take up the front three. I think Werner was maybe more of the striker, but we did see a bit of rotation going on. A lot of people were worried, you know, none of them have been playing that well consistently. Ziyech especially um, has had a bit of a stinker recently, to be honest. Werner's always up and down, and, you know, Havertz had a great game against Everton and had a pretty poor game against Leeds. So we were definitely a bit sceptical going into this game. Obviously, we had the 1-0 advantage from our previous win against Atletico Madrid. But it's the Champions League. Anything can happen and um, things can go for and against you, um, depending on what is going on. There's always these referees that you don't know that are from like, different countries and stuff. And they seem to always make questionable decisions. It's kind of... Yeah, Champions League refereeing is definitely something else, especially with the VAR as well. But when the match did get underway, um, it seemed pretty back and forth to start off with. Atletico had a couple of shots and really showing their intention to maybe try and come out and score early against us. But we did manage to keep them fairly at bay. We did have a few times where we broke through, but I'd say probably for the first half of the first half, we were... Um, struggling to really, like always, sort of make those decisions in the final third. Um, one thing, some things that I noticed, I thought defence was very solid. I thought Kante, like he was the entire game, spent the entire time just picking... Every time there was a loose ball, he was there. He was, like, in three different places at once. It was absolutely crazy performance from him. But um, the first thing that really happened in this match was a bit of a penalty shout. It was Suarez running up against Rudiger. Rudiger sort of barges Suarez over to outmuscle him on the ball. And, I mean, I'll get into Rudiger's performance in general when I did the player ratings, but he had a pretty quality game, and one that I think really uh, maybe changed uh, the mindsets of some fans towards him, including myself, to be fair, but obviously it is just the one game. Um, penalty, probably a less of a penalty shout than the one that I'm about to talk about, but he did have his arm like that and did sort of push, so it was a bit of an... 
you know, a sceptical one, but um, I do think it was the right decision to not give that a penalty. Um, we did as well later have another penalty claim where um, Aspilicueta did pass the ball back to Eduard Mendy. Maybe not too much power on the pass. Carrasco did go to run past Aspilicueta. He sort of put his arm on him. Didn't really pull him, but did have his arm in the way. Carrasco goes down in the box and the referee does not do anything about that. A bit more of a dodgy one. One that I... You look at it and you think there's barely any contact, he shouldn't go down, but then it's one that you think that that has been given a penalty before in other games. So I do think, whilst I personally wouldn't have given it a penalty, maybe I'm biased, but I do think that Aspilicueta is lucky um, to have not seen one. So you're a bit fortunate, I think, in that regard. And obviously that becoming 1-0 for Atletico Madrid could have changed the entire game, but... We were pretty much the better team throughout. Um, their attackers did not have a good time at all. Suarez not looking great, getting dominated by Zuma and by Rudiger, as were other players. Picking it up midfield, Kante and Kovacic with a nice partnership. And we were seeing a little bit of link up between Havertz and Werner. I will say that Ziyech, in the first 30 minutes, was not impressing me at all. I thought he was awful, he was losing the ball, um, he was sort of looking like how he has in his last few games. But then what, what goes and happens, guys? What goes and happens? We pick up the ball with Havertz. Havertz with his weak foot chips the ball over the top to Werner. Werner with his weak foot drives the ball across goal with his left. And then Ziyech with his weak foot slots it underneath our black for the first goal. And Hakim Ziyech with his arms like this has scored our first goal, making it 2-0 on aggregate. And would have meant that Atletico would have needed to score two goals. I mean, you can't write this stuff. Of course, he was he was terrible, and then he scored. You love to see it. I mean, ZX had a rough time recently, and I tell you what, after he scored this goal, it was literally like Bebe turned into Messi. It was something, it was crazy, to be honest, how much that goal changed his performance and changed the way he played. He was getting in loads of positions, making good runs. He was making great passes um, through to, like, to Werner, especially. Um, so after that goal, yeah, Ziek just he really turned something on that really like lit a switch on um, Ziek that goal, and it was great to see, and it was great to be one 0 ahead. The link up between our three summer signings as well. Um, I guess Ziek's not really a summer signing, but you know our three new players this season in the attack, um, all linking up for that goal. And um, whilst it's only one game, it is great to see that maybe um, under Tuchel we're getting a bit more chemistry. Um, around um, the pitch but obviously time will tell on that one um, obviously my preview for the Sheffield United game in the FA Cup will be out soon as well so stay tuned for that but um, yeah after that game or after that goal we pretty much dominated the, the high majority of the rest of the game there was a few moments where João Cancelo had a shot which was blocked there was also one really good save that Eduard Mendy did have to make it was kind of right at him but he was sort of under it um, so yeah, Atletico did have one or two good chances, but overall we did dominate play. Ziyech had a really a good shot which was saved well by Oblak. We did later in the game see appearances as well from Pulisic, hudson Adoy, Ben Chilwell and Emerson making his rare appearance. And um, just before the moment I'm going to talk about at the end of the game, there was an Atletico Madrid red card. And I mean, talk, talk about... I'll keep it PG. Talk about absolute poo housery in this game. Rudiger, whether you like him or not, and this is sort of similar with Alonso, maybe not in this game, but you, a lot of people, a lot of fans don't like them, and that's sort of what makes them great sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Like Rudiger just, you know, shoving players, shouting at players. You know, Alonso, I think it was in the Leeds, I think it was in the Everton game, he winks at someone after them a foul. Like these guys. They do just know how to wind the opposition team up. And it was Savage, I believe, elbowed, Rud El elbowed Rudiger in the stomach. It was an elbow. It wasn't very hard. Rudiger goes down on the floor. And you know what? If that was the opposition team and that had happened to us, we'd all be fuming. But, I mean, it happened for us. Um, Atletico weren't great the entire game. You know, Zuma had a head injury and they didn't kick the ball out of play. Um, so you could say that, you know, they weren't maybe playing very nice. So I guess we didn't either. And Rudiger, the abs yeah, just <laughs> gets, gets Savage sent off pretty much, winds him up enough, and they go down to 10 men. 
yeah, I mean, if it happened to us, I'd hate it. But you know what? You, you've got to admit that you love it. And Rudiger really put in a performance that I think, even if you don't like him that much, every Chelsea fan um, will definitely appreciate. And not just him. I think Zuma was great as well. Maybe a bit less in the sort of Puhausery range. But he was, when you know, we had a lot of doubts about him in the centre role. Um, he just dominated one loads of aerials. He really just kept on Suarez. He pushed forward sometimes to make interceptions. Um... I do. I think a lot of people were talking about how great Rudiger was, and I think that is completely fair. But I think Zuma had probably the same sort of display, in my opinion. It was maybe less funny and less like, haha, we we've we've showed them now. But he was just dominant and solid, and I thought that he really proved some people wrong that you know maybe he doesn't have a place in this three at the back system. Um, but yeah, guys, last moment of the game in the dying embers. Um, Atletico, they're trying to attack. We pick up the ball, goes through to Pulisic. Pulisic running at the defence. We know that maybe his decision-making lately hasn't been great. Yes, Kante, who's still got 100% energy, just bombing down the field. Passes about three Atletico players trying to run back. But he hits it to the left in the space where who is there? Emerson. Emerson, left-footed, immaculate finish into the bottom right corner past Oblak. And who would have thought that Emerson is bloody scoring in the Champions League knockouts against Atletico Madrid? What is happening? What was yesterday's game, guys? I honestly... There's no words, really, to describe how great that performance was. And, you know, under Thomas Tuchel, results are the most important thing, right? But I think we can all agree where maybe some performances have lacked a little bit of, you know, excitement. And maybe some of the draws, you've been a bit like, well attacking wise but this game was exciting we looked fluid and we got two goals and um you know what he set up well people questioned the lineup and it delivered so fair play to the manager and it did in fact end 2-0 with that Emerson goal still can't believe I'm saying that but um honestly it was a good performance from everyone I don't think anyone really had a bad game um and yeah, I mean, Atletico, they weren't great, to be honest. They weren't great in the first half. I think they are hitting a bit of a, a stunt, stunt in form. But, I mean, you know, this performance from Chelsea was was great. And we're going to find out on Friday who it is we're facing in the quarterfinals. And I think a lot of teams will be nervous facing us. Now, obviously, I'd be nervous facing some other teams. You know, like a, if you draw a Man City or Bayern Munich, you know, it's going to be it's going to be scary. And they're going to prove to be a big challenge. But I think as well, they'll look at us and, you know, know that we're, we're not to be taken lightly. And I think that... These two games against Atletico have really shown how great we've been. And again, another clean sheet. Like, honestly, we are so defensively solid at the moment. It will be interesting to see um, if that changes, you know, if we do concede a couple goals in the game. But at the moment, we're running on good form. As If that attack can just get clicking a little bit more consistently, um, I think we will really be a big dominant force. But an absolutely awesome game. Well done to all the players and Thomas Tuchel. And um, yeah, I think there was even a moment in the penalty box where Zuma and Rudiger and like Mendy were laughing at this coat. It was just, it was great. Oh, and the moment that I forgot to talk about that I've just remembered now, when Emerson scored that goal, they panned to the stands. Thiago Silva, who was just shouting orders at the team throughout the entire game, him, Jorginho and Mount all embrace on the steps. And it's just, that's just a great moment. That's what you want to see. That's what you need to see from the team, that attitude, um, just the passion. It was honestly a brilliant night. Probably one of the best games of this season, if not maybe the best um, in terms of just a Champions League night against a tough team at the top of La Liga. And um, yeah, you can't get much better than that. But I will be getting into my player ratings, guys. This has probably gone fairly long. I'm going to give Eduard Mendy an 8 out of 10. He kept the clean sheet. As you guys know, 6 is the sort of okay rating. Kept the clean sheet, did make a very good save, didn't have much else to do besides that, but it was again a solid performance. He's kept 20 clean sheets, I believe, for us this season so far, and I mean, what a signing he's been. Might go underlooked or underrated compared to other players and other performances, but he's been absolutely awesome. Um, Cesar Azpilicueta is going to get a 7.5, kept the clean sheet as well and was solid. Should have maybe given away a penalty, which is why I've put him a bit lower. And maybe there's one or two dodgy passes. I still think he played well, but that's why I'm just going to give him a little bit lower. However, the two centre-back partners, Rudiger and Zuma, are both getting 8.5. Now, I did actually see someone do a, 
a, a ratings video where they rated Zuma lower um, than I think Aspilicueta as well, which I think is unfair. He was dominant. I think he probably had the highest score if you go on stats websites because he won so many headers. He made tackles. He made interceptions. He just, you know, whenever Suarez got the ball, he was on him straight away. He even pushed forward at points um, to try and, you know, make interceptions, which he did. I honestly thought it was a quality performance from him. Now, will we probably see him in the middle of a back three in the future when Christensen or Silver are back? Probably not, and I'd rather see him, you know, on the left or right. But today, I think there were some doubts, and he proved them wrong. He was absolutely awesome. Rudiger, like I said, absolute poo housery from him. A brilliant performance, and I think this is why he got such a high rating from some people, which I think is fair. Got the guy sent off. Um, basically, eye test, he was, he was great. Domineering, um, just bullying Atletico's players. He's going to get an 8.5 from me as well again could have maybe potentially given away a penalty had to be careful um but um yeah both of those two guys i thought were brilliant and just really dominated his players especially suarez in this atletico game to the point where suarez had to come off because he just could not handle it wing backs maybe an area where i was a little bit less impressed with some of the players but that doesn't mean they weren't good alonso's getting a seven didn't really do much to be honest i didn't really notice him in this game which is interesting not really forward or defensively, but I still think he did his job well. So a 7 out of 10 for me. Reese James is going to get a 7.5. Drove up the pitch and defended well. Again, like Alonso. And one thing that I've noticed is obviously people are talking about the wingbacks passing back a lot. I think if you actually look with your eyes and see the positions that they're getting the ball and they're surrounded by like three players, I think this is probably why they're back passing a fair bit. But um, I thought Reese James maybe was just slightly better, drove forward a bit more. We were attacking quite a lot down the right hand side. Um, so yeah, still decent performances from both. Kovacic also going to get a 7.5 and picks up the ball well um, to like find space. Uh, maybe, you know, creativity maybe could have again maybe improved that a little bit, but still. A very good performance, just kind of outshone. He was just a bit outshone, to be honest. He was still very good. He was just outshone by N'Golo Kante, who's getting a 9.5 out of 10. This man was absolutely everywhere. You know, Chelsea fans were saying that, oh, he's finished. We should cash in and sell him, you know, in January or at the start of this season. What a mistake that would have been. I'm not against, you know, selling him in the you know, next summer or the summer after. Actually, I probably am against selling him next summer. But... You know, he still has things that had this team. You know, when Jorginho and Kovacic were playing well, everyone was like, oh, Kante's not getting into this team. Kante is a world-class midfielder. He adds something that none of our midfielders have. His work rate is obscene. Defensively, he is great. He can still drive forward. He can still pass a ball. I think he was really just... A lot of people saying, you know, against Southampton and stuff, he couldn't pass a ball. I think he was just a bit rusty, guys. He'd been injured for a while. He's back in it now, and he might be just thriving a bit more under Tuchel, who obviously has shown how much he rates Kante um, in this team. And it was honestly a brilliant performance from the Frenchman. And, um, yeah, more like that in the Champions League on week and go a far, far away. Getting into the front three. First 30 minutes, I was not happy. I thought we needed to make changes. I was surprised that Giroud didn't start, considering that... Um, he scored against Atletico in the first round, and that just shows that Tuchel, you know, he's not afraid, and he's, he's he'll make bold moves, and he'll do that, and they will, um, most of the time, pay off. And um, I think it probably made sense, if you think about it, obviously, um, Atletico, they were going to look to attack, they had to get forward, they were going to be leaving space in behind, and Werner did get into that. Now, Werner didn't score a goal, finishing still a little bit to be desired. However, the goal, all three of these guys linking up, I'm going to give Werner, and I'm going to give Havertz both an 8 out of 10. Um, I thought both were very impressive, they were all over the place, they were actually a lot better on the ball than I've seen them in games before, especially Werner, wasn't really losing the ball as much, was getting down the wing, getting into space. These three linked up very well. After the 30th minute, like I said before, that they weren't very good. Ziyech, however, is getting an 8.5 because at the end of the day, um, he got the goal. He got the first goal. And after that, God, the change. And maybe it's maybe it's me comparing the start to the end, which maybe isn't fair because he was still not very good at the start. But the passes he was doing, the shots, the bits of play, he looked like a whole new player. The Ziyech that we want to see and hopefully... It's a shame because the international break is coming up now, and I'm not sure if he'll start against Sheffield because of rotation. 
but hopefully just after the break he can you know bring some of this form back and we can see just some really great link up between some of these attacking players especially when you put in Hudson the door in Mount and Pulisic who got an assist as well but um yeah ZX getting an 8.5 out of 10 for me that's the 11 and um, going into the substitutes going to be giving um, Pulisic a 6.5 out of 10 all these subs didn't really have much time to do anything but Pulisic Lost the ball a few times, to be honest, but when we did get the ball in the counter-attack, he picked it up, drove forward, he made the right pass, and it was finished off, so he will get a 6.5. hudson Doy and Chilwell didn't really do anything wrong. hudson Doy actually drove forward quite well, but he didn't have much anything to do much, so I'm going to give them both a 6. Emerson came on, first touch of the ball, he scores a goal, he's getting a 7. Obviously, he was only on for like 5 minutes, so you can't be, you know, going mental... But what a moment, honestly. I mean, I'm sort of thinking about giving him one point in the play of the season thing just because of that goal and how great it was. But I think I'm going to hold back from that. But, um, yeah, that, that was great for him. And he'll probably be gone in the summer, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, that's a nice moment for him. And you could see the players, how happy they were for him. Everyone, including Mendy, ran over to him all the way from his goal to Emerson. And, um, like I said, the players celebrating in the stands as well. It was just absolutely brilliant Champions League level scenes. So those are my ratings, guys. Let me know yours in the comments below. Going into the player of the season point scoring system. Going to give one point to Werner, Havertz and Eduard Mendy. Mendy gets the clean sheet. He needs these points, I think. I think there's, there was a long period where I didn't give him any points even when we were clean, picking up clean sheets because, you know, because he... You know, didn't have to make saves. But the way he dominates the box, he claims um, balls, he, you know, high balls as well. I think um, he definitely deserves some more points. Werner and Havertz, one of the better performances I've seen from these guys. Yes, neither of them scored. But the play leading up to the goal was great. And I was very impressed with their overall performances. Two points I'm going to give to three players, okay? Which I don't usually do. But I think Ziek, he got the goal and afterwards looked amazing. Zuma and Rudiger, I thought, were just... Absolutely dominant, absolute poo housery from them, absolutely brilliant stuff from those centre backs. Aspi was maybe the weaker one in this game specifically, um, just because he should have maybe given away a penalty, so that's why he's not getting the two points. And the three points are obviously going to N'Golo Kante, got man of the match on the Chelsea Twitter, deserves it thoroughly, all over the place. Didn't put a foot wrong. Interceptions, tackles, picking up loose balls. Made that bombing run in the 94th minute, or even after playing the whole game. This man is something else. He is a machine. He gets all three points. You can see how they've tallied up. Um, some of the values might be a bit different because I have still added my points from the Leeds and the Everton's game because I did still calculate those. I think, for example, against Everton, I gave Havertz three points. Against Leeds, um, I gave Rudiger three points, and I think I gave Mendy points in that game as well. So, um, yeah, so you might see some of the values looking a bit different. Um, that is why. So, um, yeah, guys, those are my play of the season point scoring system. Getting towards the end of the season, so maybe we'll see how that's shaping up a little bit. But there still are some new faces coming from the bottom and rising up the ranks, which is always interesting. But nevertheless, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will be finding out on Friday who we've got in the quarterfinals fingers crossed for a decent draw but i'm sure whatever it will be it will be a great game um so yeah do be sure to subscribe guys to keep up with this chelsea fc content i do hope you all have a nice day and i'll see you next time